At first glance, it looks like a giant mothball. Enceladus, the sixth largest of Saturn's moons. Since the Cassini space probe sent fascinating images and data from the icy moon, scientists have become increasingly interested in it. After all, it currently seems to be the most promising candidate, along with Jupiter's moons Europa, for the origins of extraterrestrial life. We take a look at what exactly it's all about. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and get excited about more fascinating videos in the future. Where does the unusual name come from? Perhaps you have already asked yourself where this unusual name comes from. Like all celestial bodies, Saturn's moon is named after a mythological figure. The giant Enceladus fought against the gods of Olympus in Greek mythology. Enceladus was considered a son of the Titan Kronos, which corresponds to the Roman god Saturn. Giants were not very sympathetic guys in mythology. Athena is said to have even thrown all of Sicily at Enceladus to get rid of him. She then buried his body under the volcano Etna, which is still active today. The cosmic counterpart to the earthly giant seems to be comparatively peaceful and is considered a hot candidate in the truest sense of the word for its features and the imminent discovery of biological life forms in space. Enceladus, one of many? The gas planet Saturn surrounds itself not only with a striking ring system, but with a whole quantity of satellites. To date, about 82 moons are known to orbit Saturn. Thus, Saturn clearly has the most moons in the solar system. Why this is so, we don't yet know. The moons are probably formed by the union of rock chunks in the rings of the giant planet. By the way, these rings consist, for the most part, of tiny ice particles and dust. Only occasionally, larger pieces work their way through the rings. Among Saturn's moons are some that look more like potato-shaped asteroids. Examples are Phoebe, Telesto, and Epimetheus. Saturn's moon Pan looks like a ravioli noodle, but because of their size and stable orbit, these bizarre shapes are counted as moons. The more misshapen celestial bodies collide and merge, the rounder the formations become. At least that's the theory of astronomers. The Discovery of Enceladus This notably bright moon of Saturn was discovered as early as 1789. However, astronomers at that time could not recognize details as we can today. When astronomer Wilhelm Herschel studied Saturn on August 28, 1789, he used a comparatively simple telescope. It's only since the improvement of technology that we Earthlings have been able to look more closely into space. The first space probes were sent out in the 1960s. At that time, they traveled to the celestial bodies closest to the Earth, such as the Moon, Mars, and Venus. In the meantime, all planets of the solar system have been explored by probes. One that came particularly close to Enceladus was NASA's Saturn probe Cassini. The spacecraft set an absolute record on October 9, 2008, when it passed over the moon Enceladus at a distance of just 15.5 miles. This was the shortest distance at which a space probe has ever flown past a celestial body. Now, you're about to learn even more about what Cassini photographed and measured on Enceladus. oceans of clear water, and hot springs in the depths. Scientists had suspected that Enceladus, which is only 314 miles wide, had a thick ice shell, and the structures known as tiger stripes at the south pole of the moon were already well known. However, scientists could not explain their formation. After all, Enceladus is the only celestial body known so far to have such patterns. During its flybys, Cassini was able to measure the surface precisely, photograph it, and radio unique impressions to Earth. 
The tiger stripes turned out to be the crevices in the moon's ice layer, which is gauged to be 15.5 miles thick. Gigantic fountains of water and ice particles escape from the crevices and craters. Ice volcanism is a fascinating process, but one circumstance amazed researchers even more. Enceladus also spews warm, liquid water to the surface. Consequently, the little ice dwarf must be hot inside. Enceladus. Unique conditions. Researchers around the world are studying Cassini's data. The unusual conditions on Enceladus, the thermal heat, and the presence of water increasingly revolve around this one question. Can there be biological life in the depths of the moon? Researchers believe that this is exactly how the first microorganisms on Earth arose. They formed around hot springs in the depths of the primordial oceans. But how does heat arise in the depths of the moon? Researchers have found evidence in Cassini's data of a type of plate tectonics. According to a team of researchers at the French University of Nantes, there may even be tidal forces at depth. Responsible for this, they say, is the enormous gravitational force of nearby Saturn, which slightly stretches and elongates tiny Enceladus. This causes pressure to build up in the depths of Enceladus's oceans. Inside the moon must be a solid core of rock. The friction of the water on the rock could heat the water up to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. Subterranean oceans probably exist on other icy moons as well. But Enceladus is the only one, according to current findings, that has these open crevices that can provide an easy view into the depths. Now, of course, scientists are thinking about a probe that would fly directly into one of the crevices and examine the moon's interior. What else did Cassini deliver? During its record flyby in October 2008, the Cassini probe found something else that astonished scientists worldwide. The fine instruments measured a very high density of volatile gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide and organic materials in the moon's atmosphere. By organic materials, scientists mean carbon-based compounds. Carbon is considered the building block of all organic life. Carbon dioxide and the carbon-oxygen compound carbon monoxide in the atmosphere provide further evidence for organic processes. The density of the measured particles was so high that the 22 feet high and 13 foot wide Cassini probe experience serious friction. Another exciting fact about the moon Enceladus is its extraordinary brightness. Because of the structure of water ice and its atmosphere, the moon can reflect 99% of the incident sunlight. This is the highest reflectivity of any celestial body in the solar system and even exceeds the reflectivity of freshly fallen snow on Earth. All in all, very unusual results and phenomena for a moon that was thought to be icy cold and dead. When planning the Cassini mission, researchers had to decide which bodies in Saturn's ring system they wanted to examine more closely. The dual Cassini-Huygens mission was to include a surface probe. However, NASA decided to drop it on Saturn's moon Titan and not over Enceladus. Enceladus and the E-ring but this is not the end of Enceladus's peculiarities. After all, the comparatively small moon is considered the main source for maintaining Saturn's largest ring, the E-ring. Sometimes called the Enceladus ring, this strip contains ice or dust particles of silicates, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. According to calculations, the ring structures are not permanent. If they were not constantly supplied with new particles, they would probably disappear after 10,000 to 1 million years. The main source of the particles in the E-ring is thought to be the unique processes of Enceladus. Presumably, most of the particles originate from the ice volcanoes. When ice, dust, and water vapor blow up on the moon, a part lands on the surface. Another part escapes through the not-so-dense atmosphere and feeds the ring. Another source could be the bombardment of Enceladus by micrometeorites. If they hit the surface of the moon, dust particles are released. 
On the close-up images taken by the Cassini spacecraft, lots of impact craters can be seen. The coming exploration of Enceladus. Of course, researchers worldwide are now particularly interested in the Moon, which is about nine light years away from us. A team of experts developed the Enceladus Life Finder mission and proposed it to NASA as a project in May 2017. The U.S. Space Agency had been looking for suitable targets for the New Frontiers program. Enceladus, however, had unfortunately not been selected so far. Instead, NASA wants to build a mobile probe to explore Titan's surface. A probe to Venus is also being discussed, since evidence of biological processes has been recently found in its atmosphere. Nevertheless, there will most likely be a separate Enceladus mission by 2040 at the latest. A robot is being built in Aachen to drill Enceladus. Since 2010, the University of Aachen has been developing an ice drilling system that will be used on future space missions. The prototype of the cryobot Ice Mole has already been completed and tested on Earth. First drillings in the Swiss Alps were promising. In the future, this unique drilling mechanism will be used on planned missions to the poles of Mars, Jupiter's moon Europa, and Enceladus. The developers will soon be testing the Ice Mole cryobot under extreme conditions in the Earth's Antarctic and Arctic. So there are definitely exciting things going on out there. With so many new possibilities, scientists will not run out of things to study anytime soon. Let us know what you think about these missions. Did you like the pictures of Enceladus? And do you think space exploration is worth all the money invested in it? Also, would you like to know if there are organic life forms in the depths of the crevices of Enceladus? Or do you think it's rather unimportant? Share your opinions with us, as always, in the comments.